we are experiencing the joys of nature right now. Our viewers will be extremely aware of the circle is an idea, but what they may not know is just how exactly does it translate into dealing or helping to solve something like an issue like global biodiversity loss. Yes, uh, yes, and here um, the way we go about it is to really uh, talk about the three principles of the circular economy, which are of course essential here in, in helping have a positive impact on biodiversity. So I'll just explain one, uh, one by one. So the first one is eliminate waste and pollution. And here, take a look at plastic packaging. Today, we dump uh, one garbage truck of plastic into the ocean every minute. And if we don't take action, we'll have more plastic th than fish in our oceans by 2050. But what if we could rethink how we design our plastic packaging? So from the start, how can we ensure that plastic, plastic packaging never becomes waste um, in the first place? So think about um, edible cutlery or dissol dissolvable um, sachets made out of seaweed or um, also products, designing products and solutions that don't need plastic packaging. These types of innovations um, make sure we can eliminate waste and pollution to help reduce threats to biodiversity. I love that example, by the way, because uh, one of the big solutions to that problem has always been how do we clean it up? How do we clean mm. the beaches? But of course, we're never going to be able to, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a kind of a very important thing to do. But there's a limit to how much impact that can ever have. Like, are we going to be perpetually forever mm. cleaning beaches of plastic washing up? Or are we going to design our economy differently so they never end up there in the first place? Yes, exactly. And I think what's also important to emphasize is the second principle, principle of the circular economy, which is circulate products and materials, where we have to make sure that whatever we bring into the market in our economy, we have to make sure we keep it circulating and keep it out of our environment um, and, and just increase the utilization of our, of our assets. So um, just to give an example, we have fashion. Um, it has been projected that in the future, the fashion industry will require 35% more land for organic cultivation, for growing fibers, uh, but also for livestock. And so here from the, the second principles perspective, how can we rethink how uh, we use our clothes? So how can we, for example, leverage uh, business models to make sure that we can, for example, make sure that the cotton t-shirts that we wear, that we can use them for twice as long through reuse, rental, or resale. And if we can do that, we're, we would be able to half the amount of land needed to grow that cotton. And in doing that, uh, making uh, more land available for the preservation of wilderness and leaving more room for biodiversity. And then we have the third principle of the circular economy, regenerating natural systems, which is a key one, of course, in this discussion. And I've already illustrated the importance of, of soil and changing how we grow our food. Um, and here, with uh, regenerative production offers a number of benefits. So it's about how can we rethink how we grow our food in such a way that we can stimulate regenerative outcomes. So here, think about uh, making sure we have healthy and stable soils, where we make sure that, the, that we bring back nutrients back into the soil. Um, it's about having uh, healthy water tables and, and making sure that the soil that we have is able to soak carbon from the atmosphere. And, and, and in doing that, stimulate both the biodiversity in our soils, but also above the ground. So um, regenerating natural system is an essential one in our fight against uh, biodiversity loss. And so just to close, we, you know, these three key principles play an essential role in in, in our fight. So the circular economy is all about transforming the economy to be regenerative by design. So eliminating, circulating and regenerating ultimately to have, you know, to allow biodiversity to thrive. And in doing that, it has the potential to help address the 90% of biodiversity loss that is currently associated with how we produce goods and grow our food.